WLSC Tiger Radio is your station for River Talk 2.0. The same show that you watch on WWMB CW21 and HTC Cable Channel 4 is now on the radio too. River Talk 2.0 with Banana Jack Murphy and the Freakin' Deacon right here on WLSC Tiger Radio. Hey, we're back with more River Talk. Conway Medical Center makes it possible for us to be here, so we appreciate them and all of our sponsors. Support all of our sponsors when you can, but use some common sense when you're out there engaging in commerce, especially mm-hmm. now. We don't want this uh, coronavirus to get out of hand here in our neck of the woods. Dr. Paul Richardson joins us now, Chief Medical Officer at CMC. See, I'm getting good where I ju- just don't extend the hand anymore. Uh, t- thank you. Thank you for not. Thank you for not. Of course, it's a well-disinfected yeah. hand. Hey, and I appreciate the social distancing you guys got going on here, I mean, too, by the you way. you need some more? Uh, I think we, we should. We're pretty good. Okay, we're, we're good. good. We're good. We're, we're good. good. We're good. If yeah, it we're... makes you feel any better, I'm using this whether I touch anybody's hand or not. Smart. Smart Crazy. move. Yeah. Great move. Well, I move. try. Mm. I try. Social uh, distancing uh, doesn't have us where we probably want to be right now, but it has made a difference. Uh, I hope. I hope. I think it's still too early mm-hmm. uh, to, to know whether or not it's made a uh, real impact that we need it to make. I think that we're, we're probably still not practicing it as aggressively as we need to because – uh, these are the things we've got to do. We've got to social distance. We've got to cut the handshaking out, you know, coughing into your sleeve. These things that you hear out there, they're not just nonsense. They are the way, our best defense to, to slow this thing down, hopefully to stop this thing. So that's, I mean, we, we've got to do those things. Well, I'm a germaphobe anyway. Well, um, he is. No <laughs> kidding. I'm not to the extent of Howard Hughes, but. You know, I, I wipe things down, hand sanitize, I, just something I've been doing in the business, a microphone. I'm just, you know, we're talking gar- He gargles it. with Lysol. <laughs> they, uh, I don't do any of that nonsense. I mean, but, I'm uh, telling you. I, I often wonder because they talk about that if there's something where someone would cough, I wouldn't know if someone coughed in the aisle at right. the grocery store. That's right. That's two right. minutes before I yeah, walked that's right. there. I you, wouldn't know you, it. You wouldn't really know that. That's so correct. So I'm thinking – I change clothes if I go out. Mm-hmm. That's how crazy I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, will, mm-hmm. I will change my clothes. Mm-hmm. I hear a lot, a lot of folks doing that. I mean, a lot of folks doing that. And uh, I think, like I said, just good prudent measures, you know, uh, to, to try to continue to slow this thing. Because it really is it's spread, it's spread you know, through our oral and uh, nasal passages. And um, and we, we we touch our hands, we we touch our face, we put our hands down somewhere and touch our face. You know, statistics are we touch our face three thousand times a day. Wow. And I have tried to be uh, pay attention to that, and I've caught myself. And I'm oh, get get your hand away from your face. So I've been trying to do that more often too. Sure. Hmm. I mean, when someone asks you a question. You go into the thinker mode. You ponder. You're touching the face. Right. That's right. That's right. Uh, I'm guilty of it. Guilty I'm as charged. Majorly, majorly. Guilty as charged. I don't even like to look at my face. <laughs> so that's where I feel about it. So it won't bother me none. I have looked at some and got a little queasy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I was using a 10-foot pole with them anyway, so right. I was already already had the built-in social distance. There you go. Present company no, exempted, no, correct? No, Present no. company exempted. No, you're, right. Right. Oh, no, okay. you're, you're all right. You're okay. good. You're good. All right. Yeah. All right. Just well, making let's, sure. Let's talk about symptoms because I, I know this – I mean, obviously, we're at drive through at the bank, but there's a teller there. I mean, you get to know your bankers. Right. Tell her. I know she deals with allergies. Correct. I mean, I've talked with her, and correct. so I know this Absolutely. time of the year there's a lot of pollen. But right. But some folks that – didn't go inside all the time. They kind of gave her the look a little bit. She was over there and sneezing. I knew it was. So what are the symptoms? Well, the a lot of symptoms do overlap. So so you have to be careful because um, the main symptoms that we're seeing are, are cough, mm-hmm. uh, fever. Now, some people early on, I know I read on the Internet where if you don't, fever is the first symptom. That is not necessarily true. But fever normally does accompany a COVID infection. And then uh, for whatever reason, the, the patients have a lot of, of chest pain with the cough. Mm-hmm. Uh, it probably has to do just with the amount of lung involvement right. uh, with the disease process. But so those are kind of the sort of what I call the big three uh, for, for COVID infection. Now, you know, you think cough. Sometimes when you have allergies, you cough, right? Yeah, Occasionally you, you have Man. chest pain. But um, and, and then you also got to look. 
these patients seem to be more short of breath than you would see with like an allergy type exacerbation mm -hmm. or even what we see sometimes with you know with with some other type infection sinus infection that kind of thing you don't really see that level of shortness of breath so so there is while there is some overlap, there is some pretty significant differences too. Most of these COVID infections, you aren't seeing a lot of the runny nose and that kind of stuff necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's more of this dry, sort of painful cough is, is what we're seeing more of. Well, well fever. Yeah, I'm I mean, sorry. That, no, I'm no, sorry. no, no. I, I was just getting ready to say, you know, uh, how do you, you know, differentiate the coughs? You know, is it like a smoker's cough, uh, uh, the uh, allergy thing and all that. It, it's really hard to. It is. It yeah, is. It is. Mean, and, and most of you, scary. most of your patients would have a quote unquote smoker's cough. That's more of a chronic thing, right? So, right. so these are more coughs that just started, mm -hmm. you know, in the last whatever number of days, as opposed to something you've had for a number of months or years. Um, and and again, it's it has to do most of the COVID patients, it's a dry cough. If you think about it, a lot of times, it's, and a lot of times, especially in, as a, a pneumonia progresses in a normal pneumonia, those coughs become more productive of mm -hmm. sputum. Sure. These are more dry type coughs, a little bit unusual. Little yeah, bit unusual. so the front line at the grocery store, just one quick cough and you're gonna be there. Huh? Yeah, idea? yeah that's it. There that's you it. go, so it get, get in and out real it, quick. It gets you right to the head of the line. There you and go. And the regular, <laughs> I mean, there's no such thing as regular flu, but the flu's still out there. Absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely. We we our flu season here locally. Uh, normally, if you look at the CDC guidelines, they usually say the flu season runs to about March, about where we are now. However, we frequently locally see cases into May. That mm -hmm. that's not sure. uncommon. And as a matter of fact, uh, we're seeing a fair number of flu when we patients who come in thinking they may have COVID infection. A lot of times they're testing positive for the flu. Right. Um, we've seen a lot of cases of that. Not uncommon at all. Well, fever. I want that. I don't want to lose this point. Okay, fever is a good thing sometimes. I mean, isn't that a defense mechanism it, for the body to take care of something? It, it can be. It can be. I mean, it's more of a sign, obviously, of something going on. Okay, right. Uh, but but yeah, yeah, we do believe that that may be our, one of our body's attempts in order to change its temperature to to uh, sort of keep the the organism attacking us in check. But it definitely is one thing that seems to be pretty common in, in these patients who are infected with COVID. So could we go out there and take some over-the-counter medication to, to deal with our fever, and that could be backfiring on us? Uh, not, no, not really. Okay. No, not really. Because, set that but no, 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 we need to set that record straight because a lot of times the fever will be very symptomatic, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know okay. you need to. And the recommendations now are using Tylenol or acetaminophen uh, uh, for the fever uh, in pretty much so every patient. There's a few few exceptions, pretty much so that's safe and, and, and should be effective. So, But most of the people going into that would know what would be safe anyway. Correct, the correct, correct. That, that would be something you would check with your own doctor for. Right, right. exactly, yeah. exactly. Based on your conditions. Correct. All right, you, Conway Medicals, how are you guys dealing with it? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Well, I will say absolutely. Um, we're, I will tell you, the, the, the folks I get to work with day in and day out are unbelievably fantastic. Um, you know, uh, we our, our marketing department put up a sign in front of Conway Medical Center. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it says, Heroes Work Here. Oh, and, that's great. And, and, yeah. it, and it absolutely is, is 100% correct. The level of professionalism is always there, but and the level of competency is always there, but I think we've taken it up to another notch. Um, you know, we're, we got, we got plans in place, uh, to, to surge if we need to, hopefully God willing, we won't have to do that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but if we do, we got plans in place, uh, the nurses, physicians, all the staff, right attitude, um, really looking, you know, really always take care of this community and looking, you know, we're going to do that again. We'll, we'll, we'll absolutely do that again. So, so yes, the answer is we are, I think, as ready as anybody can be for something of this nature. I, in my medical career, never had to plan for deal with anything like this a couple of my colleagues were talking about it uh, the other day and um you know this is not something that that we're accustomed to but uh but something that i i, I think we, uh, we we will handle for this community absolutely yeah you really can't uh, go out there and plan for this sort of. No, you, you, know, you can't plan for. No, you can't. I mean, you know, we, we have drills. We have, uh, you know, we we drill every every year for for various things, mass casualty, what what not. But you know, really, until you actually live this, you can't really do it. And and I think that's the. Uh, that's really what we're kind of we're learning and, and taking our advice from the, you know we got a lot of experts CDC 
uh, getting a lot of advice from them. Uh, you know, we're, we're part of a, of a network, an infection control network through Duke University. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of information, a lot of guidance from them. So uh, it's, it's, uh, we can lean into external um, uh, experts as well as our own internal resources. So that's very good. I think it's good for us, but it's great for this community to have that net, you know, that, that net of expertise, that breadth that we have. Well, if you're just joining us here on River Talk, we're chatting with uh, Dr. Paul Richardson, uh, the medical uh, chief medical officer over at uh, Conway Medical Center. This is obviously popping up. Okay, somebody's going to have a baby. That happens. Mm -hmm. Somebody has a heart attack or a car mm -hmm. accident. Mm -hmm. Those things happen. How does that impact the regular service? Well, well, first of all, I, the message I want to get out there to everybody is we're still open for business. Okay. Uh, we're, we're not just a COVID hospital. I mean, you know, we've got to take care of the babies, the heart attacks, the this, the that. That must happen. Now, we have had to make some changes in our operations. Mm -hmm. That we have had to, that, that we have done. Um, you know, we've, we've implemented a, an external triage area at our ED in order to, when these patients do present, they'll be able to uh, be, be, uh, sort of kept out of our hospital if they don't need hospitalization we'll be able to treat them triage them treat them and, and hopefully get them back home with the right recommendations or, or whatever they need so that's step number one step number two is we've had to put in a no visitor policy and that's really for everybody's protection we hate that uh, we, we love our visitors we love our community but um, in order to keep our staff safe and other patients safe uh, at least for now, we've had to uh, not allow any visitors. Uh, we do have some exceptions. A birthing mother, uh, obviously, you know, we're going to let the dad come in. Um, you know, a minor child, they got to have a parent with them. But um, but we do but we do strictly limit that. I mean, just for everybody's safety and and trying to cut down on the spread. I mean, that's how strongly we believe in you know social distancing and that kind of thing. Emergency room. I don't like going to an emergency room. On, on, a, on no. a regular day. No. Me neither. I, I don't like it either. I don't even like to go to the hospital on any day. No. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, to that, go that's visit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, I'm sure you like it. You're getting a nice paycheck. Me? Oh, oh no, baby. <laughs> he's twisting I'm, it all up on the yeah, spot. Well, right, I'll tell buddy. you what, he sure right, is. He yeah. really is. No, I just, I, 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 hospitals, as far as I'm concerned, if I can stay away from them, I do. If I have to go visit somebody, I will. But but it's it, it, for some reason. Listen, know. I don't blame you, honestly. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's definitely it's, it's not a place necessarily just to hang around. No, so right. I'll give you that. So especially these days, so. I can do incredible things in that elevator with an elbow. What floor? Smart move. But Smart emergency move. rooms. I mean, it, you know, for things that I've been to last year with my wife, issues that I would never even think would be emergency room issues, but but they were. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, you encounter some tight quarters in there mm -hmm. so how is how is all this impacting uh, the day-to-day -day routine of well, the emergency room well again what we're doing is you know we've we've moved the triage or that initial assessment outside okay. of, 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 of the emergency right. room door so basically so it's like a tent thing correct yeah. it is actually it's a it's it's a couple of tents we've got set up one as a waiting area and and one as a triage area where the patients can come in be assessed we can even do some testing inside that area right it's right. open air where you know we don't have to worry about such confined quarters gotcha and then depending on what the patient's complaint is um, if it's something non-respiratory related absolutely you know we go ahead and we have a mechanism to pass them on through the normal mechanisms if it is respiratory related and they need to be assessed for admission we also have a separate path way for them to go through where we do take the uh, necessary precautions uh, both again to protect them as well as ourselves so um, so we, we've got a pretty good system we got a great system now going uh, for right now that, that really helps to 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 be able to put the patients in the right level of care with the right level of precaution so I feel great about that that was uh, something we've been doing now for almost two weeks now ten days two weeks we've had that going has any of the um scenarios played out with hurricanes has that has that been a feather in your cap as far as preparing for this you know honestly it has been i think that i, would um, think, it might I be. think that the um you know again obviously different but some of the preparations are kind of the same mm -hmm. uh, for the for the flooding that we had you know a year or two ago and then the hurricane preparation so some of the uh you know all hands on deck you know uh, knowing knowing what resources to pull uh that really has helped us i think i think it, it it's made us a better emergency prepared um hospital now this is a different animal but at the same time some of those concepts have been the same so okay. I, it's, that's a great question but Absolutely. 
surgeries, regular surgeries? Uh, well, again, for everybody's safety, we have uh, we have now canceled elective cases right. uh, temporarily mm -hmm. uh, for the next uh, couple of weeks, and then we will reassess. Now, again, if 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 a patient needs surgery, they got to have surgery. You know, uh, heaven forbid, but people are going to have appendicitis or right. or, or something yeah, of that nature. Um, you know, uh, a cancer diagnosis might come along that has to be dealt with. So. Get, we're open for business for that kind of thing, but but elective things we are for everybody's protection and safety. We are delaying those. Um, you know, get, get, elective it's elective for a reason. That word means something, and and so we're going to we're asking folks to delay those for a while again for their protection as well as ours. Well, I'm hearing some stories. I know you've heard <clears> too uh, the mask and, and other things uh, for, for for your healthcare professional. I mean, are you protected? You good on that front? Um, there is a national shortage of masks. We're good right now, and, and okay. we're, taking, we're taking steps to uh, even make us better in that area. Uh, you know, the community has stepped up and, and just been the outpouring of, of support and offers has been fantastic. We really so appreciate all that. But, um, but yeah, we, we're in pretty good shape right now. Again, it depends on how this thing breaks. I think if, if our measures that we're doing with social distancing and whatnot, if we can, you've heard it, and I, we've heard it at, at length bend the curve if we can bend the curve we should be fantastic mm -hmm. but it all it's all going to depend on on how we continue to to keep this thing in check and hopefully the things that are going on like in new york not going on here that's what we want to avoid what's your prediction on that curve around here uh too early to tell yeah. ask me uh, about a week from now i think we'll have yeah. a better feel for it a week from now right now honestly i don't Mm, I, I don't know. It, you uh, know, it seems like everything is is kind of uh, concerning all the way up to uh, the first of April or whatever. Yep, a lot of people yep, are saying that yep. you know, even the president. I mean, you know, that yep. when you watch all this, uh, they're, they're setting timetables basically, which is pretty somebody, hard. I somebody think, to asked do. me that question yeah. last week, about the middle of last week, and I said, "Ask me again in two weeks." Yeah, and I think that's that'll be a much better tale of where we're going to land. Uh, is in about the next, you know. 10 days or so, 10 to 12 days, in my opinion, just based on kind of the way this thing's sort of progressing and, and whatnot. I'm hopeful we're going to be in, in, in better shape, but we'll see. Good on the staff? Got enough personnel to keep us rolling? Right now we're great on staff. Great. Um, and, and like I said earlier, uh, just the uh, – the whole attitude of the staff is fantastic. Um, you know, folks aren't panicking. I mean, folks are folks are doing their job and doing it the right way. So uh, right now we're in good shape. See, no so, staff infections. There you go, Bob. I love yeah, it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're covered <laughs> over there. They're I'm heroes, talking. and I appreciate yeah. you all having the sign. Well, I, hey, I, I, I appreciate, you know, marketing coming up with that and putting out because it's the truth. It is true. I mean, I mean it really the, is. The, the folks who do it, and, I'm, and I mean every job, not just – it's not just the doctors, nurses. Every single person that works at Conway Medical Center is a hero, and and is going into that what I consider a battlefield every day. Mm -hmm. And so, and they need to be applauded. It doesn't matter what your job is there. We're all a team, and and every everyone's important. Thank you for coming by to see us. Appreciate it. Thank you all for having me, and let's get the right information out there. I there do you go, it. brother. Sure. Don't yeah. touch your face. No, I'm not. I haven't touched it one, one single time. This <laughs> I whole touched time. mine three times <laughs> yeah. that I was yeah. counting yeah. it. Yeah. I wiped Actually, my nose. Yeah. <laughs> I'll disinfect later. Thank y'all for having Paul me. Paul Richardson, Chief Medical Officer at Conway <laughs> Medical Center. We appreciate them coming by to give us uh, the facts today on River Talk. My timing's off today. Yeah, so's mine. Uh, Wash your hands, be nice to somebody, and stay at least six feet away. Throw a kiss to your mama. There you go. Throw her a kiss. Throw her a kiss. We'll Throw see her. you next time on River Talk. Till then, so long, everybody.